Hi, I'm Will Marshall, and I'm here at Pyramine in San Francisco to show you a technique that I've been developing with my band, Coma Cartel, that automatically swaps out uh, what instrumentation the MIDI instruments I'm using on stage are playing. Uh, in my case, it's uh, MIDI keyboards and a drum pad controller, but you could apply this to anything. Now, the idea here is that when you're performing kind of a full set, you've got a track list, you've got a lot of different songs, you're probably gonna be playing a lot of different sounds at various points. Uh, this has always been an issue with synthesizers especially, and it's historically been a really problematic thing to deal with. My uh, mentor, Patrick Gleason, is a jazz synthesizer player, um, particularly in the 60s and 70s, and um, literally to change presets on the old synths he used to use, he had to pull out cables and plug in new cables, kind of patch bay it, um, which was, a really problematic, you know, you have to train to just be able to do that rapidly enough in between songs. It was it was really difficult. Uh, newer synthesizers have made this much easier because you could put presets on them and just switch through the presets on the synth. But now we're kind of in uh, the digital land, we're in the computer realm uh, these days. You are often using multiple controllers, often all running through Ableton, and you know, maybe using lots of different software synths, lots of different um, samplers. And so there's no easy and reliable way to set up a MIDI controller that pages through presets and we can see what those presets are. are. So the way I've designed this is that it automatically swaps out which preset is assigned or which sound is assigned to any given instrument uh, based on scene launches, because I arrange my set all uh, vertically, split up on Ableton scenes. And so, as I move down through my set, each time I launch a scene, it changes the associated sounds for all my instruments, so I don't have to think about it. Now, the way we do this is pretty simple. Uh, in Ableton, you'll see here I have song number one, song number two. These are just conceptual songs. I would use my real live template, but it's very complicated, and I think it would be confusing. And we have this MIDI channel here. Now, a lot of people kind of use the record arm function to route MIDI into Ableton. Now this is fine for the studio because you can move the record arm around easily. Uh, live on stage, I recommend not doing this. What I always do is turn record arm off and actually take the MIDI in control and select whichever a MIDI instrument I want to control that MIDI track. So in this case, the uh, control S49 and I set monitor to in. And this means this keyboard will always play this MIDI track uh, regardless of what's going on with the record arm, regardless of what else is happening. Uh, similarly, if I had a, another channel, call that pad, and this one I'll call keys, uh, I could connect that to say my push and monitor that and have that option available. So really good kind of little, little practice is to just hardwire that stuff so that it can't possibly get disconnected during a set. Now. Right now I have this distorted road sound, which I'm a huge fan of, but I want to say have also a piano sound available. And what I'm going to do is group this road sound into a new instrument rack. And then I'm going to take this grand piano preset and put it in as well. And if I play that now, That actually sounds really good, but we're getting the grand piano and the roads uh, layered together, which is not what we want. So the easiest way of setting up a, uh, a technique for switching between these is to go into the chain selector. You can see here, uh, each of these chains in the instrument rack has a slot in the chain selector. And by default, those slots uh, range from zero to zero, which means when the chain selector is at zero, these instruments will play where it's anywhere above that, one all the way up to 127 you get nothing. Now what we want to do is shift the grand piano up just by one, that's all we need. Uh, did I move that two? No, it's one. So now, if the chain selector is at zero, Rhodes, chain selector is at one, oh, that's two. It's a little tricky to change this with the mouse. Can I I'll just use the arrow keys? Now, one very simple way of then switching the presets is to MIDI map that to a knob. Um, I personally don't love to do that because it's kind of hard to see you know, exactly where a knob is at. Once you start getting 10, 15, 20 different sounds, uh, you know, one knob is, is not necessarily high enough resolution to easily switch between them. But it's an option in some cases to just use a knob or maybe a series of uh, buttons, something like that. What we're gonna do instead of that though is use something called a dummy clip. 
And a dummy clip is an audio or MIDI clip inside Ableton that is used purely to control automation. Uh, in case it doesn't generate either MIDI or audio, it just uh, manipulates uh, Ableton's automation parameters. So what I'm gonna do is map the uh, chain selector to this macro, and I'm gonna rename that from, inst I'm just gonna call it, mm, let's say selector. And then I'm gonna color code it because you should always color code your things. It just makes it easier to get around your session later. And what we're gonna do is open two mini clips here and here. Now you'll notice that the MIDI clips are grayed out. The reason they're grayed out is because we have monitor set to in rather than auto. And what that means is that Ableton will ignore the MIDI from these MIDI clips. Now, obviously there are no MIDI notes inside these MIDI clips, so we don't need there to be, but it's just a nice little safety thing that these clips can't actually play anything ever. What we're gonna do is go into the automation, and you can see because we clicked it last, the uh, instrument rack selector is already selected. And so for the first instrument, we're gonna call this clip Rhodes. Um, I think, is it a Rhodes or a Wurlitzer? It's labeled Rhodes, I think it's actually a Wurlitzer, but it's not important. Um, we're gonna go in and draw this automation line at zero. And for this second one, we're gonna call this Piano. And we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna draw, draw in an automation line at one. And now, I'm also gonna set the, uh, if we set the launch parameters, I'm gonna take the launch mode to gate so they just flick on for a moment and then flick off. And then I'll turn quantization to none so that whenever I uh, launch a scene or launch these clips, it instantly changes the uh, instrument rather than having to wait because that might be confusing. So if I hit this, Rhodes. If I hit this piano. And you can see, when I launch these clips, there's a little flash down here as Ableton actually automates the sample selector. And so obviously this means if you're you know, over here on the push, you launch the first scene. And you could imagine, you could have any number of songs, you could have different sections of songs with diff different instrumentation. You can really uh, develop a whole system. The uh, live show I'm working on right now has, I think, maybe about 20 different sounds on the keys, maybe 10 different sounds on the pads, arranged over maybe 15 different songs. And so it's, it's actually quite in depth. You can just kind of go nuts with this. Your only limitation is that you can only have 128 different instruments, which I think is a reasonable problem to have. If you've got more than 128 instruments on stage, you're probably crazy. If you're a music producer, subscribe to our channel and stay up to date on the latest PureMind tutorial videos, track breakdowns, elite sessions, and more. Visit us at PureMind.com.